Nobody parties without the jizz. Welcome, Killer Film fans, to another podcast edition of Late Night Classics, my retrospective series that looks at my favorite films from the past and the present. And as always, I'm joined by Donnie Broussard and Christina Rickman. Hello. What's up? How's it going, guys? Very good, sir. Very good. It's going good on my end, too. Ooh, a long week. I'm glad to put it behind us and have some fun. And it's, I feel like it's been a while since we've all done one of these. Yeah, it's been a yeah. bit. So basically today we're going to look at a brand new film because we want to definitely do the current movies as well. We're going to look at Killer Eye, Halloween Haunts. And to me, we have the star of the movie. Without her, that I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much. But she's smart. She's sexy. She's sweet. She's our current hottie of the week. Welcome, Olivia Alexander. Hello. Hello, yeah. Olivia. Thank you Hello. guys so much for having me. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to come talk with us. We appreciate it. Oh, well, I mean, thanks for picking Killer Eye for your late night classic. Well, we like things that are killer. You know, killer film, killer eye. I mean, who doesn't like things that are killer? (laughs) (laughs) No one. If they don't, they deserve to be punched. Just kidding. (laughs) I'm not kidding. (laughs) They don't like something that's killer. They deserve a hit in the ass, man. Come on. <laughs> um, okay, before we jump into the movie, <laughs> we'll talk about the plot a little bit. Um, Donnie, I'm sorry my computer's slow. Wait up. Mm, so look who's got IMDb open now. When Jenna asks her four hot girlfriends to help convert an old mansion into a Halloween haunt... They decide to party instead. Things get steamy between the girls until they accidentally unleash the half-pint horrible killer eye, a perverse party crasher from beyond. Bent on having his way, the killer eye will stop at nothing until he gets exactly what he wants. So before we jump into this film, can we talk about, did you always aspire to be an actress and how did you get into the business? Yeah, um, well, my mom was a dance teacher and I was pretty much one of the most outgoing and crazy children on the planet. I talk to strangers, <laughs> and that's one of the things that they look for when um, they're looking for kids to be in commercials. And uh, I grew up in Louisiana, and my mom got me an agent in New Orleans. And when I was two, I did national commercials for Ultra Gain Detergent and Little Debbie Snack Cakes. And I did a lot of print work in uh, New Orleans. And um, then when I was six, I was in a beauty pageant. And believe it or not, in my interview, they asked me if uh, there was any animal that I could be, what would I be and why? And I said that I would be an alligator because I wanted to bite people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) basically, one of the judges was an agent from L.A., who uh, was, he was a big child um, agent and he begged my mom for eight straight months to bring me out to LA. And uh, my father reluctantly let us go out for pilot season when I was six. And we didn't stay in LA. But after that experience, as a six year old child, I would have told you that I needed to be an actress, which is kind of crazy. But I moved out to L.A. uh, officially when I was 13, and so I've been here for almost 10 years auditioning and uh, on the grind. So Christina's a big fan of something you did in the past, so I'd like to let her jump in here. So You Think You Can Dance. (laughs) One of my favorite shows. I know know you were on. You weren't on for that long, but... Definitely enjoyed watching you on that show. So could you just kind of tell our listeners and myself a little bit about the show and what it was like to be on? Is there any like behind the scenes stuff that happened that you might want to explain to us? Yeah, of course. Um, I was on season three of So You Think You Can Dance. I made it literally like right before the top 20. I watched the top 20 fade into existence. Um, No, but uh, my mom was a dance teacher, like I said, and um, my aunt and her put me up to it, and I rolled out of bed and went and auditioned, and I luckily made it to Vegas. 
And that show was a really, really, really freaking crazy experience for me. It's like there's so much pressure. You can't even understand the kind of pressure that they create in the environment. And so just like every day you're freaking out. You're just you're completely freaking out. They've got cameras everywhere. And you just every single day you just see people like getting cut and sent home. And it's just a super dramatic experience. But at the same time, I I would have done it all over again. Like it was so much fun. Um I got to work with Mia Michaels, who is just like a legend to me, even I though her. I was panicking and freaking the hell out because it's like her choreography is so hard. She like to find contemporary dance, but she's just like one of those people who just brings out like the truth in you. Like she just doesn't care what you do dance wise, as long as you're like being honest in whatever it is you're doing. Like you could just get up there and just stand there. And sh if you did it, and made it interesting, she would probably applaud you. Um, but yeah, there's some, you know, actually there's some, there was some behind the scenes drama. I mean, I love to dish, so I'll tell you guys a little bit. Um, yes. So you get a roommate, you know, <laughs> you get a roommate on, uh, in So You Think You Can Dance, and they put you with somebody that's like around your age. And so at the time I was 18, and my roommate ended up making it into the top 20. I shouldn't say her name, even though it's probably not hard to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm so terrible. I should not be saying this. You guys, this is all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you love us so much. It's okay. She was so weird. <laughs> Dude, like, they, you know, it's like, it's so funny. Like, you, you can pick your friends, but you can't evidently pick your So You Think You Can Dance roommate. <laughs> and they could have been more opposite. Like, it was just the strangest experience of my life. And uh, we do, they do a group number, which they give you the music at about 1 a.m. And they tell you that you have to perform something at 7 a.m. Wow. Mind wow. you, I'm sick as a dog. And my aunt is currently, at this point in my life, dying of cancer. So... The drama is at an all-time high, and we all know I'm an actress, so I'm just, like, way, way being dramatic. And this girl gets an attitude with me, and I mean, you can, it was on the show, you can see it, like, I got bleeped out, like, I got the So You Think You Can Dance over my mouth, because I think I said fuck or something, which <laughs> I thought was legend. Amen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this girl got an attitude with me, and we had serious drama, and I was just like, look... They didn't even show half of it on the show. They, I mean, they, they did show a little bit, but because it's an hour-long show, you can't even understand how many hours of footage they cut down. Um, but, yeah, so she was crazy, and then I had to, like, <laughs> go back to our hotel room and sleep in the same room with her. And uh, whenever I was leaving to fly um, back home after I had been cut and she had made the top 20, she gave me this awkward fake hug, and I was just like, this is so <laughs> strange. This is so strange. <laughs> And then you like see these people on the show and you're like, oh my God, they're going to have careers. Like, where am I going to be? And I shit you not, I'm at an audition like maybe seven or eight months ago for How I Met Your Mother. And who walks into the audition? No way. <laughs> oh yeah, girl. Oh yeah. She walks right in. She looks straight at me and she doesn't say a fucking word. No so fake hug. So did you get the part in, in How I Met Your Mother? Believe it or not, I did. I booked the role, and then they cut it from the show a few days after, and I was so devastated. But oh. I, I booked the role, so I got the last laugh. I'm a huge, <laughs> huge fan of that show. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah. I really, I, the casting director, she really liked me, and I booked the role. But um, sometimes with like episodics like that, when it's a small role, like three to six lines, a lot of times they, they it ends up getting cut. Um, I know a few people that's that's happened to. Um, and I have a show right now that's coming out, so I'm not, like, technically allowed to audition for other TV shows, like, per my contract. Um, but I'm hoping, like, eventually I can uh, squeeze my way onto How I Met Your Mother. It's an amazing show with, like, a sick cast. It's such a good show. I totally agree. I love that show. I, I, I actually had never heard, never seen uh, how you, So You Think You Can Dance before, but How I Met Your Mother I have seen. So. Well, do you have any other questions for me about it? I mean, I... It's up I, to Christina, because she's just... Uh, yeah, I've never <laughs> seen the show, so I, I, I don't even as know. As I, as I'm not so sure Christina's what it's about. Happy, as long as Christina's happy, 
<laughs> I, I'm totally happy with that. I love that you, you can talk about like what what happens behind the scenes because not a lot of the viewers of that show understand how hard it can be for these dancers and how you have to learn all this different choreography. And so, yeah, I'm totally satisfied with what you had to say. We can yeah. move on to movies now. Yeah, I can understand because <laughs> this, this white boy can't dance, so I don't want to learn <laughs> <more> choreography. <laughs> He's got the white man's disease. Same here. Absolutely, um, sir. I, I'm a slow dance only kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, but we make, we make up for it in the bedroom. That's where we have our rhythm. Right there, there you go. How you go? <laughs> um, so how did uh, <laughs> how did Killer Eye Halloween Haunt come about? Have you, have you ever heard of Charles Band and Full Moon Pictures? And how did you get the role? Yeah, um, I had definitely heard of him and... Uh, you know, I had done like a very, 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 very low budget indie horror film back in February that has, to my knowledge, never been released. And I was really interested in obviously getting into like the horror genre. I definitely have aspirations of one day being a scream queen. And uh, um, I, I want to, one of my big goals is to be an action star. And I think like horror is just such a good place to start for actresses. So um, I had my manager really like actively trying to get me some roles in some horror films. And I went in and I auditioned and uh, believe it or not, they wanted me to read for Jenna, the girl next door who throws the party. And uh, the casting director, after I read, he said, you know, um, could you could you read for Jenna? And I just I looked at him and I was like, you know what? Actually, um, I'm really only interested in playing Giselle. I'm like, I'll read it so you can see me read something else. But frankly, I I only want to be Giselle. I had read the script and I just loved her and I just thought that she was the kind of character that I could really run with. And I thought she was the most interesting character in the film. But don't tell anyone I said that. <laughs> I love the name Giselle. The Jizz, yeah, the Jizz. <laughs> which was actually in the script. That was that was completely written, which was genius. One of the I was like, I have to say that. Like, I just I'm so excited to say that. So I auditioned, <laughs> then I got the call back, and that's when I met Charlie, and um, we we hit it off. And then um, within like a few hours, they were negotiating. Uh, they were negotiating for it, and then we shot it over the course of the summer. And, um, yeah, and it was just such a great experience, like, working with an all-female cast. Mm -hmm. When when I heard it was an all-female cast, I got kind of nervous, and I was like, uh-oh, a bunch of crazy, hot bitches on a set. <laughs> this is going to be real good. And it was. I mean, we just had the best time every day. We didn't even, like... You usually get, like, your own trailer, your own dressing room type of thing. We were just, like, all basically having a slumber party every single day. It was just so much fun. And wow. then um, the way that they make Char – Charlie especially makes his movies because they're, you know, a lower budget than most films. You you grind, and it takes you to such, like, a place as an actress that you, like – you learn how to just, like, make shit happen and go with the flow. And it was just, like, a really, really great experience. And, I mean – who doesn't want to do a movie about a horny eyeball? I always thought it's it's a metaphor, like a one-eyed monster, a cock <laughs> that wants to impregnate women, especially very that hot word ones. Gets thrown out a lot on our podcast. It's 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 not a podcast; it's a cock cast. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm glad that you got that. You know, I don't I don't know if all like every viewer who's going to watch Killer Eye is going to be able to uh, really understand that to the fullest but well they probably because they don't get any so <laughs> they, don't, <laughs> they don't put it together <laughs> but yeah it was uh it was really fun um when the killer eye would get brought to set i would be like ladies and gentlemen please welcome the real star of this film to the set the killer eye and like make all these jokes or whatever and it's just so funny how they like actually make the killer eye exist in the film and slime him up and stuff it was just hysterical did they jizz him up Literally, they have like this fake, I don't even know what you call it, just goop. It's <laughs> so disgusting. It was just so gross, but amazing all at the same time. That's th awesome. So it's basically like real sperm. <laughs> <laughs> or he it could have been for all you know. <laughs> he looks like a sperm too. He really does. Like when you look, I mean, obviously, like the, he's an eye, but he kind of does look like a sperm also, which makes I it even more great. 
having a one-eyed monster on set like that, that big, I feel bad for every guy after this movie that comes along because he's got expectations to live up to now. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to fall way short, except for Donnie and I. Well, nah. I mean... <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> we, we are the studs of the internet, just it's a little secret. I figure I'd let you know. Well, I mean, you got what... you to give the people what they want, you know? Well, what they want is an all-girl cast, and other than the original, um, the killer eye being played on the television set, which I had never seen, this is there's no guys. It's just all girls, which I think is rare, even in horror films. Well, I mean, I think like the the genre, like it's the type of genre that appreciates like beautiful women, and uh, I thought it was really empowering, you know, and, and exciting. And my inner feminist was like, "Heck yeah, all-girl cast, right on." Um, and yeah, it was just, it was, I think it was creative because the sequel had a lot of cock in it. <laughs> I mean, the original, not the sequel, duh. The original, <laughs> if you watch the original, it is very, very high on the penis scale. I, I know why. Why? Because the director's gay. Possibly. I don't know. Well, I actually was an extra on a movie and I actually talked to the guy that directed the original one and he's very open about it, which I have no problem with, but his movies are very gay friendly. Well, there you go. I mean, and that, that's fine. Cause there's the an original, audience for that too. The original was for the gays and this one is, you know, for the non gays. We love everybody here, you know, and all the so, girls. Are, oh, go ahead, Christina. Sorry. <laughs> so how much of like the film and like on set were you actually topless? I'm I, I'm curious. A lot. Like almost <laughs> every day my boobies were present on set. And uh and at attention too. Mm. Yeah. I mean they're <laughs> naturally perky. I I'll I'll give them their, their due. Um they're <laughs> they're actually named, my boobs are named, um, by one of my uh gay boyfriends, actually. This is just, you know, a little inside. Um, one is named Letitia and one is named Queen Elizabeth. So, yeah. That is so awesome. They, they got I their date. I think I love you now. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that because mine are named too. What are, what are your boobs named? Betty and Bertha. They're lesbians. <gasps> I love it. Awesome. <laughs> I've never been so in love with letters until today. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I have to say the star of the movie, the stars of the movie are your boobs. Oh, wow. So, they're definitely. so on. They're, my, my boobs would like to say thank you so much. <laughs> that's an amazing compliment. And oh. uh, I'm just, they're just overwhelmed and they're just so proud. And, and um, they, yeah, <laughs> they, can't wait, they can't wait to be uh, naked more. I, I'm a huge fan of nudity. I think that. Uh, Amen. There's yes. there's so much violence in movies, you know. There's more. I think there's something like we see over ten thousand violent images a day. Like as Americans, we're exposed to that, and uh, we don't show boobies. And I went to Saint Bart, which is uh, basically like all French, and they've got boobies in the phone book, wow. and they've got everybody's naked there and it's just like only in america we have these issues with nudity and uh i just i think that people get naked in real life like why would we not portray that like honestly in a film and i think like as as an actress and as also i mean i know this is going to sound really creepy and weird i'm not saying that i'm a role model because i'm actually the anti-role model but at the <laughs> same time like we need more people to be free you know, we have too many, like, constraints. We have too many people who are just saying, like, you know, don't be who you really are. And, frankly, I love to be naked, and I'm going to continue to be naked in, in a lot of my roles. I know it. I just, I enjoy it. As long as I can, at least, you know? I mean, you're only 23 once, so why the heck not? <laughs> there's a good, a really good story from set. Uh, there's the one scene where, the, like, the first time my, the killer eye zaps my clothes off. I'll try not to spoil the the entire movie, um, <laughs> but he he zaps away my clothes, and so you know we do we do it, and then I take my bra off, and I mean it's a closed set, like it's really professional the way it's done, um, and then one of the actresses, but two of the actresses are in the scene with me, Chelsea uh, Edmondson and uh, Jen and Jenna, who's played by Erica, and uh, Chelsea 
completely forgets her dialogue. And we're, we're standing there and I'm topless and we're waiting and I'm waiting. And she just like, she just gets so red and she freaks out and she's like, I'm so sorry. I just can't stop staring at your boobs. <laughs> I, I, forgot I don't know what's going on. And then we all, and like, it was the funniest moment on set. Like everyone just dies laughing. And I was like, it's okay. We, we can figure it out. The power, awesome. the, the, so power the power of the boobies. The power of the boobies. She was so embarrassed. She walked. She walked back upstairs. We're shooting in this uh, creepy old house in LA, and she literally, she's like, "I'm really sorry. Like, I, that was so unprofessional of me." I'm like, "Honey, it's totally fine. Trust me. Like, <laughs> there are so many worse things in life that could happen than you losing your train of thought because you were staring at." My well, boobies. Well, you know, Donnie shoots films, and I'd love to be an extra. So maybe we can do a movie about your mesmerizing boobies and how they <laughs> put a chance on people. I'm probably the worst actor in the world, but who cares? If I get to see the boobies, I'm happy. Well, Actually, I don't want to get I you guys too series. excited. Oh, really? I have a web series I'm working on right now, and uh, that we're about to start casting for. And, and the hardest thing is always finding girls that do nudity. Girls that want that that. That well, you know, the thing is, I do low budget, so it's always hard to find girls to do nudity for within our budgets. You know that that's the biggest hurdle. And then when when we find girls that are willing to do it, usually their acting chops are not there, and that's always a pain in the ass because you have to scale back the role. So yeah, you know, I I totally understand that. I mean, there there's definitely a lot of actresses who are anti nudity and, and they will only work with doubles and they don't they're That's just something that they're not about. And I have friends that um, are actresses and would never in a million years do it. And it's just like, it's not for everyone, but for me, I did, um, I, I did nude modeling when I was younger and it was something that I did like out of rebellion. Cause I'm like one of those people who it's like, the more you tell me not to do something, the more I want to do it. And, uh, once I did that, I, I got a certain like amount of confidence where I just felt like, you know, this is just something that I'm able to, to offer as an actress. And, you know, obviously like as long as it's tasteful, it's, I'm, I'm so honored to, to do it, but it's uh it's not for everyone. Everybody has their own opinion about it. I just, you know, for me, See, it's I, the way to go. And I don't want to get you guys too excited. Too I, think, I think it's different. I, I do a lot of nude <laughs> shoots. I do a lot of nude, like, model shoots, still photography. That's how I make most of my money. And and um, I find that there's a level of confidence in modeling that I don't see in acting. Uh, uh, the models that I shoot are all confident. They are not worried about their bodies. They're comfortable with their bodies. They know what to do in front of the camera. It's really smooth and easy transition. But on camera with a crew, it's a little different. I, I find that actresses all, are a lot more uncomfortable. Um, actresses are, in general, I would say, more innately insecure than models. Yeah, I And I too. think that like there's just something that when you're an actress, like when you're a real actress and you have the ability to, to be someone else... You're you're like digging down in a, in a different place inside you, and it's very vulnerable. And there's so much rejection in the business. And I take it from somebody who's been, you know, trying to quote unquote make it since I was 13 years old for 10 years. Um, it weighs down on you. It can become very very intense when when you hear like big A list celebrities say that they wish their children to do anything else in the world. That's why. It's because it's brutal, especially in L.A. Everybody's gunning for the same role. Everybody's ready to just, like, trip the bitch outside of the casting. And everybody wants it. And on top of it, everybody's gorgeous. And everybody is usually really, really talented in their own different way. And it's, it, it just, it's a, you have to have a thick, thick skin and uh, models, on the other hand, I think they're really free and they're really, they're just like, they're creatures, you know? And I think that um, I definitely, I can definitely see that, that difference. But I was going to tell you guys, my boobies are coming to you in 3D very soon. Thank God. I can't wait. 
<laughs> my, my girlfriend, she, I sent her a text message and I was like, I just booked a role. I, my boobies are going to be in 3D. And all she did was respond, dreams come true. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Right, awesome. right there with her. Hello. Well, before we get to that, I want to go back real quick. Um, like, I think you're kind of old school, which is great, especially when you think about the nudity, because back in the 80s, it was very much accepted. And, and women like Brink Stevens and Michelle Bauer and Linnea Quigley, they're like the original scream queens of these kind of films. And I think that's what's missing from cinema today is so many actresses don't want to do that. But I think if you have the figure and you have the confidence and you do these kind of B movies, that's what's going to separate you from everybody else. And I think that's why right now you're starting to catch steam and a lot of projects are happening for you. And I think that's the mentality to have. I think the sky's the limits when you are willing to do more. I think it's like, it's very, it's that you say that it's very interesting because I think of myself in as an actress, even as a person, almost like very retro in the sense that I respect actresses from back in the day, everyone from, you know, Elizabeth Taylor to, you know, the scream Queens from the eighties. I mean, like all, all across the board. Like I think even my look can sometimes be not, uh, like as mainstream Hollywood as it is today. But I think that, um, there's, it's also like a really poignant time, like in our culture, like it's about to be 2012 and you have those, you've had like tons of like a rise in, in watered down film, watered down media, everything's safe. Everything is, I don't want to say everything, but a lot of it is. And I'm just like the type of person that I just want to push boundaries. And I think that like, I'm one of those people who I enjoy walking the line and I enjoy people not knowing what's going to come next for me. And every time somebody is going to expect something from me, I'm going to do something different just to throw them the fuck off because that's what I enjoy. And so the fact that I'm getting the opportunity to do that and things are really like, like you said, happening for me right now, like I'm just super blessed. And I just think that, yes, there are those young girls out there who want to look up to Disney stars and then there, there's young girls out there who don't. And those young girls who don't want to look up to Disney stars, I hope that they look up to me because just because you get naked in movies doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're a whore. It doesn't mean you're a slut. And it, it, we live in a society full of judgment. And I think like I, not only am I trying to do it with my work, I'm trying to do it in my, my everyday life. I'm just trying to show people that and you can be whoever you want to be, you know, like I know it's cliche and it's like kind of dramatic, but I am an actress, but it's like <laughs> for me, when I read these scripts and I take these roles, I see myself as a vessel and, and I see myself as even in, even in killer eye, even in, you know, the smallest of roles, I try and find whatever message I'm trying to portray in in all my work because I write music, I dance, I say, you know, I act. Obviously, I do so many other things, and everything that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to represent a different group of of women out there. And you know, like slut shaming is something that happens in our culture. You know, like when you have women who are in charge of their sexuality, people get very uncomfortable, and they throw gauntlets, and they want to judge you and they want to say things and I'm just like one of those people who I'm not only doing this because I love to act but I'm coming in with an agenda and I want to get people talking about girls like me girls who are not going to be afraid of what people are going to say so I just got way off topic and got <laughs> super dramatic well, and hardcore I, and you guys, I, think, but. I think that in the movie your your nude scenes are relatively comfortable you know you seemed comfortable the whole time you were having fun your character was sort of mean it was awesome uh one part of the movie i was really disappointed with was the you know the lesbian scene because <laughs> i mean here you got these two girls that look totally uncomfortable making out i mean stick your tongue in her mouth it's all right it's not gonna break you know grab that boob and own it <laughs> like it's yours because i mean you're about to have sex with this woman hold that shit you know but and 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 i feel that band that, that that's one part he in my mind that he just he he dropped the ball on you know make own that shit it seems so that scene seems so uncomfortable where your scenes were like yeah let's have fun man rock it 
Yeah. But that could be the confidence of the actor. Again. I think, I think it has so much to do with just like with everything. I think when you're on a set and there's like people around and there's cameras, like you can't even imagine like how you're going to feel. And I mean, I'm just one of those people who I'm comfortable sitting there topless and saying, let's rub donuts. Awesome. <laughs> so, you know, mm, it, I, I love the girls. And so I don't want to, you know, like say anything about them, but it's a valid point. And, and I think it, you're exactly right. It's about comfortability. It's about, you know, what, what you're comfortable with as a person. And, uh, luckily for me, I just, I'm super comfortable in my skin because of all the experiences I've had in my life and I'm just unapologetic. And I think that obviously, it, I mean, it, it's, I appreciate you saying that and I'm like really thankful that you could acknowledge that, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, I was there on set that day and I can say that it's just extremely uncomfortable sometimes the things you have to shoot. And then other times it's just not, it really just depends on the actors on the, the, um, whole just everything on set i actually uh just lost my on-screen virginity believe it or not oh really yeah that's also (laughs) coming up in the future uh and uh it's it's awkward you know you show up to set literally i showed up to set the first day on on this project and they say all right this is your co-star and you guys are gonna have fake sex have fun (laughs) (laughs) that's but you know what though i give charles man credit because for one Every girl in Killer Eye is either lesbian or bisexual or bi curious. And and some of the lines are great, like let's rub donuts and one girl's talking about putting on, you know, my fuck me heels and this is a dick flick, not a chick flick. I don't think I ever heard that before, but I was I thought it was hilarious. I I don't know. I think the expectations for a movie like this, you have to watch the trailer, do your homework, look at the filmmaker, and, and see what kind of movie it is, because I don't think it's for everybody. I know there was some online reviews that were a little bit Yeah, I, I, read some, I read a couple things, and I was like, well, what were you expecting? I mean, it's Charles, so you, you have to ex- – you're expecting what he usually puts out. And I think you're right. I think the writing was really clever. I had another line where I said uh, – she said, I want to procreate with you. And I said, procreate? You mean it wants to fuck us? And I, I mean, there are just so many lines in there that are they're hilarious. And I think that you have to go into it with a certain level of expectation. And if you can do that, you're going to have a blast watching it. I mean, I watched it the first night it was available um, online on like Warner On Demand. And I was cracking the hell up. And I thought this is so fun. It's so um, it's just enjoyable. It's light. I think it's what you would expect, but I think it's all about what you go into it with, with what your expectations are. But I think you also have to like, listen, I don't know if all movie watchers, um, are as, uh, tuned in as you are, Jason, because you're, you know, you, you've picked up on things that I definitely know people haven't, but it's just about your expectations, I think. But I think it's a really fun movie. It was amazing to work on. And, uh, I don't know, like, how can you not like a movie about a horny eyeball? It, uh, you know what? I, it's a late night classic, and that's why I brought it on. Um, it, you know, is there any other stories that we missed? Anything else you want to hit on with uh, Killer Eye? Um, well, I mean, there was one day where I was really, it didn't end up in the film because I was, they let me improv, which is really rare because obviously, like, you're on a super tight schedule and you're just trying to get the shot. Um, but I, I walked in and into the kitchen scene when I say, you know, nobody parties without the jizz (laughs) and, uh, Charles just let me riff. And I was just, you know, when you play the bitch, you just, you get to have so much fun and I'm just like laying in, just, just going in at it. And it was just, we just, we cut and then we just all busted out laughing. And it's just like, there are just those moments like that, that don't end up in the film that you wish everybody could see. But you know, I just I hope people check it out. It was it was really fun. And I think that a lot of the talent in the in the film, I think we're you're going to see us a lot in the future. And I think that's another thing that Charles does really well. And I think he he can spot something special in, in actresses and in, in talent. And I think uh, it's going to be one of those movies that people look back on and go, holy crap. That's funny. Those girls were in that you know movie together, this and that. So. Yeah, I hope people check it out, and I appreciate you uh, 
picking it for your late night classics because I agree. I think it's uh, I think it's a special little flick. Dick that's, flick. That's such a cool thing to hear a hot girl say late night classics. Late night classics. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I have made I, it. I have officially made it now. I was a little disappointed that you didn't have a makeout scene with one of the other hot chicks. I was yeah, too, I, honestly. You know, I uh I'm saving I'm saving my first lesbian scene for uh for Amber Heard. Ooh. She's she's a real lesbian. Yes, she is. Nice. My yeah, lesbian she's quite crush. yummy. Yes, yes she, she is. is. She's she's without <sighs> hottest lesbian in Hollywood and uh, I'm uh, I'm pining for her I'm trying to manifest a lesbian scene with her but yeah the jizz uh, the jizz is strictly dickly she's uh, <laughs> not anything other than large penis I assume so uh, yeah well, now, what, what was it like to be on set with all those crazy like props and stuff those were pretty amazing too Oh yeah, there was a day. There was a day where I literally like tripped over some like I don't want to think. Of, I don't think it was a gingerbread man toy, but it was something. And I busted <laughs> my foot open, and I was bleeding everywhere. And I was like, "Great, the jizz <laughs> officially out of control, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bleeding like so silly." But yeah, no, I mean the props and everything and the set design were were crazy. We were shooting in this creepy house, really creepy house, and. Uh, I really wanted to take home like half of the stuff. I was trying to like pocket some of it, but you can't really put a gigantic clown face in the back of a Mazda. So I was kind of screwed. <laughs> you know, if you take that ginger dead man and squeeze him, I think it has uh, Gary Busey's voice come out of it. It take, does. Just it take does. your shirt off. Nobody will Gary, follow you. They'll be like, Gary oh, Busey. there's a hot chick. <laughs> They'll let you take what you want. Just getting arrested on set of the killer eye, <laughs> trying to see all the, trolls, the full moon horror uh, pieces and everything. But yeah, it's pretty amazing. And there's actually like a sound stage within the the full moon offices. And uh, I was trying to steal some evil bong stuff too. I, I was a little <laughs> oh, nice. Things. But yeah, I was like trying to pocket like all the DVDs and everything from where they have everything, where they ship everything from, and. They now, were like, get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to talk about you go from working with Charles Band, who's definitely a B-movie legend, filmmaker and director. And then you go to the king of the bees. I mean, Roger Corman has been doing this for probably 40 years plus. I mean, he's launched the careers of Jack Nicholson with Little Shop of Horrors and Sylvester Stallone with Death Race 2000 and, and so forth. And now you're going to be doing a 3D movie with him. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, um, about... Two and a half months ago, I uh, heard from my manager about Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader 3D. And I have been auditioning for every cheerleader movie for the past, you know, five years because my dance experience. And I have been dying to be in a cheerleader movie. I mean, who doesn't <laughs> want to be a hot, sexy cheerleader in a movie? Like, come on, dream here. So I just went in there, guns blazing, and then it's Roger Corman who, like you said, launches careers. He's so respected. I mean, I I think he is, without a doubt, one of the most, if not the most successful indie producer of all time. Um, and I love Camp, and this character that I play, her name is Brittany Andrews. Um, she's the villain. And if you thought the jizz was bringing it, you haven't seen anything yet. But you know, bring little, that jizz. A little taste Whoa. of uh, a little taste of the uh, the plot is uh, the lead girl, um, other than myself, is is uh, a a great newcomer new excuse me newcomer named Jenna Sims. She was Miss Teen Georgia a couple years back, and uh, she plays a character named Cassie Stratford and Cassie is the ugly duckling, the nerd. And her mom is played by Sean Young, who was the popular president of the sorority way back in the day and the captain of the cheer squad. And she's basically putting pressure on her to be like her and to not be the nerd. And there's a, a substance created, which takes her from ugly to pretty, but it has some very, very interesting side effects. And she begins to grow and grow and seeing as my character is the president of the sorority and is the captain of the cheer squad, 
she is not happy with the changes that Cassie has made. And the whole film kind of unravels from there. I got to work with freaking legends besides Roger. I mean, that was crazy in itself. Then I, there was Treat Williams. Yes, from Dead Heat and Deep um, Rising. On. <laughs> I'm like sitting in hair and makeup talking to Treat Williams, trying not to act like a stan, like such a stalker fan. Like, hi, yeah. Um, we had Sean Young. I mean, Ace Ventura. Let's just be honest here. <laughs> <laughs> and you had Ted Raimi, Sam Raimi's brother. Yes. And you know, every single day, I was just trying to talk to him about getting to meet Sam because he's doing the new Evil Dead remake with Diablo Cody. Mm -hmm. Just putting it out there into the universe, universe, if you can hear me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then we had uh, AJ Lamas, Lorenzo Lamas' son. We had Ryan Merriman, who was the star of Final Destination 3. And then we had Jenna and I. We had an amazing cheer squad. Um, it, it was just an incredible experience. And I I don't want to say it's, it's going to be another late night classic, but you know, you can just sometimes feel something special on set. And uh, there was definitely like a special energy. And I think people are really going to get to see my chops as an actress, as a dancer. And uh, I'm, I'm just really excited. It was such a blessing. I got to be so close with the cast. And uh, yeah, I think I think you guys are going to love it. I think that's going to be coming out in the summer where, where they're taught there's talk about comic-con um there's there's a lot of different things right now i've got to do some more um green screen and stuff like that in the future um but it was just an amazing experience and it was just one of those projects that i mean i don't want to say that it, it changed my life but it absolutely changed my life and i think it's going to be uh one of those moments where Olivia Alexander is going to arrive. Fingers crossed. Fingers now, crossed. Now, two questions, and I think these are really important. Um, 3D, I'm not a big fan of <clears throat> movies that are shot in 2D and converted in post-production. So one, is this a 3D, a real 3D film? And two, do we get to see your boobs in 3D and how much of it? Yes. There's lots of 3D boobs. It's real 3D. Everything was shot in 3D. It's not going to be converted. Um, and our director, Kevin O'Neill, like he did a really amazing job of, you know, really trying to give people real 3D, trying to give lots of pop out moments. You know, every day we really focused on on those things. And you have to be mindful as an actress to to, you know, how that's going to work. But I think um, people are a little worried about the 3D market being oversaturated, you know, but I think it's it's really more about the quality and I think it's it's just really more about um, about the people that make the movie and Roger and Kevin and the whole crew were really focused on the 3D aspect of it. And it is just so cool to like go put the glasses on and like sit in the, the playback area and just like watch some of the dailies. I mean, the whole 3D experience was something that I really loved and the camera was so sick and it was it, it was just really great. And I mean, personally, I hope that they're... 3D is the future of movies. I know that James Cameron and a lot of like big time directors are really trying to show the business like the power of 3D. I just saw Mortals 3D this week and I freaking loved it. And I think that it's such a interesting movie experience. And uh, yeah, I'm just anxious to see what happens in the future with it. But it's real 3D. You will not be disappointed, Jason. So the movie is going to earn its R rating with uh, tits and ass and exploitation? It's, from what I am told, this is just what I'm told. I could be totally wrong. We have rated R for the release, which is going to be through a new on-demand sci-fi <laughs> channel. And then straight to DVD will be unrated. Mm. So lots of goodies with that. And I'm going to be posting and we're going to be posting some um, some behind the scenes footage in the next few months to kind of get people excited. I'm kind of a flip cam whore. And so <laughs> I have lots of like amazing um, behind the scenes video um, of just like different things from around set. And so uh, who knows, maybe I can like send it to you guys and you guys can be, it can be like a killer film exclusive or something. Amen. That, that would be really that cool. That sounds great. I'd love to see the movie early. You have to bring me as your plus one. <laughs> oh boy! Don't, don't be jealous, Christina. Don't be jealous. 
Shit, I, I <laughs> am just. That's one of the great things about living in Southern California is this is where everything's happening. So no, I don't yeah, just rub it in, Jason. It's true. It's I don't know about all that. I, I walk onto some pretty impressive sets here in Louisiana, my buddy. Oh well, Louisiana is just y'all are booming down there with film. I uh, I was at this this place in L.A. That's like a members only club. It's super uh, just chic. It's like everybody who's everybody is there and I had a little bit too much to drink about I don't know this is this is a few years ago and I stumble out of the bathroom and I see a guy in a New Orleans Saints jacket and I freak out and I'm like who that who that like oh my god I'm from, I'm from Louisiana I love the Saints I love the Saints blah 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 and I realize it's Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> That's awesome. and I'm like great i'm making an ass of myself in front of lawrence fishburne but he was so nice he was telling me that he bought a house in in new orleans and so many of the a-list actors love new orleans they love working there and it's just so great what they're doing down there with film but you're right there's some amazing badass films being made down there so right now we have killer eye that's available next year we have you on attack of the 50 foot shitter 3d what can you tell us about get lucky with live oh well when I uh, was not working as an actress, when I couldn't pay my bills, I, uh, I always blogged uh, about love and relationships and dating, and uh, I started a dating service. I mean, some people consider me a matchmaker. I consider myself to just run a dating service. Um, and uh, Get Lucky With Live is like a brainchild of mine. It was just a side project that I was doing because I, I studied communications and women's studies in college. And I, I love relationships and I love dishing advice to people. And I think that what comes along with my like weird, quirky personality and my whole feminism and sexual empowerment type of uh, point of view is that I think I see dating and relationships in a different way. So about three and a half, four years ago, I started this little company here in L LA called Get Lucky With Live. And then two years ago, we were announced as in development. Well, actually a year ago, we were announced as in development with Oxygen. And uh, our show Love Scouts is actually premiering on December 20th on Oxygen after Tori and Dean at 11 p.m., and it's just going to be something totally different. It's um, it's a dating show, but it's something that guys are going to want to watch with their girlfriends because it's full of hot girls and hot people. And it's edgy and it's fun and it's, it's for the younger crowd. And uh, it's going to show people more of my like sweet, businessy side. But at the same time, there's still lots of laughs and there's still like my usual outrageous antics. And uh, I'm working with people here in L.A. who who need some help. But unlike The Millionaire Matchmaker or different shows like that, we like to focus more on the inside and less on uh, the outside. Because here in L.A., there are a lot of really good looking people, but they're all really fucking crazy. <laughs> and so I try and give people like the makeover from the inside out. And I do a little thing on the show called The Fixer where I create different scenarios and we just try and have the change start, you know, on the show. And it's really interesting and I'm really excited and it's just like a totally different platform for me. Um, and yeah, so that's going to air on the, the 20th. So it's something really soon that people can see me on and, and I hope everybody watches it. Um, and I I'll hope you watch it. it. <laughs> Tell all your friends. Oh, I will. I'll be watching and I'll be yeah, going to the a, what? And I'll be going to the premiere party. Yeah, we're having a big premiere party in LA um, coming up. Hopefully, we'll have the invite for that out really, really soon. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be a it's going to be a, a big thing, and it's it's really huge for me. I I produced the show, I created it, and um, I think. I, I'm or I'm hoping that this is another moment where people are going to start to know the name Olivia Alexander and, and understand that, you know, I'm, I'm bringing something new to the game. And it, this is just one of those things where 
you know, my career was not going as planned. And I'm a firm believer that in this business, if you can't get people to give you the opportunities, you have to create them for yourselves. I mean, that, that's why I like the Ben Afflecks and the Matt Damons of the world, you know, they write their roles. They're, they're telling their own stories. And I think that this is just something that young women especially need. I'm not, um, I don't believe that young women need a man, but if you want one, I can help you find one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's the whole get lucky with Liv thing. People always are like, a matchmaker? What do you do? Huh? So <laughs> in a nutshell. Every, everyone can also find you on Twitter and Facebook and yeah, I my Twitter is at Get Lucky with Liv, and uh, my fa- I'm on Facebook under Olivia Alexander, and uh, yeah, I love the internet. I love social networking. I have a blog. I have my own my my acting website is Olivia Alexander Online, and then my uh, Get Lucky with Liv website is getluckywithliv.com. And yeah, I love to tweet and Facebook and interact on social networking. I think it's a great tool, and obviously, I'm an open book in my life, so. I uh, I love to connect with people and hear from fans and it's after Killer Eye came out it was pretty crazy some of like the messages I got like I was super <laughs> super overwhelmed with like how sweet people can be I got a couple letters from prison after So You Think You Can Dance which was really exciting <laughs> what <laughs> yeah most people think it's crazy but I'm like I'm honored you know you get a letter from prison and you you really feel like you made it now I only got to get a Wikipedia page now if I get a Wikipedia page I know I've really made it <laughs> but yeah so well I could speak for uh, Christina and Donnie I thank you very much for coming on and taking the time to talk to us we really appreciate it thank you guys for having me it's, you guys are wonderful I, I love talking to you guys oh Oh, thank you. We love talking to you. I don't want it to end. No. <laughs> you know, I have noticed with some of your pictures that you have online from like some of your modeling stuff that you you look like a young Angelina Jolie, not going to lie. Oh Yummy. I stop it. Don't say that. I'm dying over here. I'm dying. <laughs> well, 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 actually, the picture that I uh, put for the Hottie of the Week, the last one, where you have the strong makeup, yeah, that was... Angelina Jolie big time. I get Angelina Jolie a lot. I get like a young Angelina Jolie, especially because I'm very like, um, I always say that Angelina Jolie is one of those actresses that she can say a million words with one look. And I'm definitely one of those people. If, if I think something, it's all, all over my face and I can't hide it. Cause we have like those big eyes. I get mm-hmm. Shannon Doherty a lot, which I really? think is interesting. I used to get Lindsay Lohan like all the time whenever she was a brunette like kids would come up to me in the freaking airport and be like can I have your autograph and I'm like are you fucking serious do I, do I look like I'm in jail shit <laughs> she wasn't in jail then she was oh, still, okay. she was still just like a, a part on the party scene then but yeah um <laughs> and then I get who else do I get I get Mila Kunis a lot yeah I could see that but Angelina Jolie <laughs> is my ultimate idol in life she is literally like such an inspiration to me so She's that. my wife. She just doesn't know it yet. Oh, my God. Can we be, like, modern-day, like, polygamous with, like, no men with Angelina Jolie? Like, oh, she yes, should just please. take on wives. <laughs> oh, it's a bullshit. Only if I can dress like a woman and get in on exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie will give you a wig. It'll be fine. I'm Donnie pretty Donnie sure I look good in heels. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> just get your drag outfit out of the closet, Donnie. Yeah, right. I know. I was like pretty sure. You know you 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 have a few pictures floating around. Yeah, they're, they're out there somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> that would be top, <laughs> you know, Bring that so- jizz. The ultimate threesome. You two and Angelina. That I would love to watch I that. I thought he was be- about to say you two and Donnie. I was like, all right, bro. Oh, get no. a little close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to see that, Donnie. Um, but I would, do a, I would actually do a pay-per-view just to watch you guys make out, all three of you. Oh, that's sad. That would be like the events. <laughs> Me, decade. Olivia, and Angelina Jolie. Oh, hell yeah. That would be like... I'm totally down. Where do I sign? $90 pay-per-view. <laughs> I it. wish. I only wish. He Angie. Would make so much money, Olivia. <laughs> Angie, did you guys just see that 60-minute interview with her? She said she's only a bad girl for Brad nowadays. Mm. Oh, that's so sad. I died. I just died at that. Bring that jizz. Bye-bye. Thank God it's Friday.